Hello, this is Tilly from Trifold Production with another Blender Quick Tip. And in this Quick Tip, I'm going to show you how you can create groups of individuals or crowds in Blender using this add-on that makes it very easy and simple with a couple of clicks to get a really solid crowd simulation. And that's by using the Horde add-on. And I'll leave a link uh, for you guys to download in the description below this video so you can try it out for yourselves. Uh, but once you've downloaded it onto your computer, the installation process in the blender is still the same this is for blender 3.3 it might work for 3.0 and above but for 3. Point or 2.9 and below it doesn't work just for 3.0 i'm using blender 3.3 myself installation go to edit preferences install navigate to where you've downloaded onto your system click on install add-on and you're just going to put check in the box and that pretty much activates the add-on and it's ready to go. Let's click, let's delete this uh, cube here. I press delete on our keyboard, press shift A on our keyboard again. Go to mesh, plane, S to scale it up. Let's drag up our mouse. And we're gonna left click to accept that selection. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, that looks like a good size. And the add-on is going to be in the toolbar on the right side, right hand side of your user interface in Blender. Click on Hoard and here it is. There are four categories, and for every category, there's, there's about three subcategories. So you got human professionals, uh, human swim, zombie bears, zombie clothes. Uh, for human professionals, you got three categories there. there these are subcategories that are underneath the main one. But let's stick with uh, the human professional first. And you have two systems. You have the board system, which is native to Blender, which has been with Blender for quite some time. And you have geometry nodes. And it's best to use geometry nodes. I've tried to use the board system. And it doesn't really work. From my own experience, it doesn't really, really work that well. So geometry nodes are what we're going to stick with. I'm going to click on Add Geometry Node System. And it'll give us this pencil or pen we can use to draw the path for our group of individuals, our crafts. We're going to draw a zigzag here. And it gives us these individuals on our plane here. And we're going to click on sync parameters, click on our eye drop, lift click on the plane, and then populate on target. And now it populates all of our individuals, our crowds, onto our plane. If you click play, you'll see they're all animated and they're also all textured. Now they both, it renders both in cycles and in even once again cycles is better. Uh, but it's pretty much a group of the same looking characters. So if you zoom in on some of them, you'll see that some of them are the same. See this woman wearing her dress, this is the same woman here and the same woman here. This guy with his head tilted looking up at the sky, the same guy here and the same guy here. So it's the same, that way. that's why with this crowd system, you don't want to zoom in too close. You just want to keep your distance in terms of uh, rendering. You just want to simulate a crowd and they're all kind of the same. You can change up the uh, patterns by changing these parameters. You can increase the curve count, which means increase the number of people on that curve that we just created. Now, the curve itself will not be rendered, just the individuals. Uh, you can increase the density on the curve. We bump that up a little bit. They'll get more. Um, the density in Y. All, it all deals with density. It seems like all the parameters deal with how uh, dense you can make uh, the crowd, which is what you know you, you want now if your characters are too close together you can increase the crowd spacing with this parameter here click on that to make them separated a little bit more you can randomize them on your grid also so that they're not all pretty much in the same place so to speak and that uh, looks pretty good when you press play once again they, they are animated but once again you want to be careful in terms of the number or the count of the uh, crowd or the people in your crowd because the larger the number the longer it's going to take for you to render this out now you want to let's go to the the moving aspect of it now these principles applied it's the same for all categories for all the uh, 
systems uh, in the add-on. It's all the same. But let's go to uh, the moving part because that's that's one thing I have to kind of kind of let you guys see so you can kind of understand how the moving aspect of it works in terms of the crowd moving. We're gonna open up a new scene. General, don't save. And sometimes it's best to clear out your scene and start a new scene. Sometimes if you delete characters in your scene, you try to uh, repopulate it with another crowd. It kind of causes Blender to kind of keep the old crowd some, somewhat and have the new crowd also, which will kind of bog down your system. So the best thing to do if you want to start a new a crowd is to start a new scene altogether. So shift A again on our keyboard, plain S to scale it up. Make a little bit bigger S. And let's go to our horde add-on once again. And this time we're going to still stick with the professionals. But we're going to click the ones that move. And add geometry node system. And we're going to draw a path this time. Uh, let's make it somewhat straight. Well, it's not too, too straight, but straight enough. And we're going to click on sync parameters. Click on our eyedropper. Left click on that and snap to grid. Now with this, you can see the path is here. Um, if you render this out, this will show. So in order for this to not show in the renders, click on the visible path. This is activated, that's why it's blue. If you left click on it, it makes it uh, pretty much disappear so you don't render out the path. Now if you press play, they'll walk. Only problem is they're walking, uh, one, they're not really moving, and they're walking in place, and two, they're kind of grouped too close together. To fix that, we're gonna to go to edit mode. So tab up, so have all this selected, and tab, press tab on your keyboard, go in edit mode. And then all the, uh, these are just Bezier curves. These are all highlighted here. And then press S, Z, zero left click and I'll snap them to the grid now they're walking at the end of the path we want them to start from the beginning in order for them to start at the beginning you have to adjust the character offset so let's uh, reduce this down now they've all gone back to the beginning when you press play now they're walking but they're kind of sliding as they're walking in order to fix that you have to change their Character speed. I, I found out that if I divide this character speed by three, it helps them walk in a believable way. So left click, left click again, press slash on your keyboard, and yes, Blender does does it does do uh, basic uh, mathematical calculations. Divided by two slash two, enter. Oh, sorry about that. It was supposed to be by three. So that three six divided by three is two. So let me just type in two here, enter. Now press play. Now they're walking at the right speed. And, and that's what you want, but now they're kind of grouped too close together. You can change that by uh, increasing the spread. Let's left click on this a few times. Help them spread out a little bit. And let's press play again. Now they're not as close together. And they're walking along the same kind of line there. You can randomize the paths by clicking on that parameter there. Make them spread out a little bit. That way they're not all together in the same kind of spot or same place. Press play again, and now they're kind of walking, you know, where they want to walk. You'll still have some of them kind of walking into each other. We can decrease the population. And increase a little bit more. We got less people, less interaction, less less of them walking into each other. Press play there. Still have that guy them walking into each other, but it's not it's not too bad. So that's the whole point of these parameters. You adjust them as you need to adjust them. But yeah, that's the the add-on that you can use to simulate crowds in Blender fairly easily. And the parameters they're not too difficult to understand and follow so it's pretty much straightforward and um, hopefully this add-on and this tutorial was helpful for those of you who are watching once again thank you guys for subscribing in the past those of you who are subscribing now those of you who are subscribing in the future 
really appreciate it and this helped the channel grow quite a bit and i really thank you guys for that assistance and i will see you guys on the next one all right adios